Um, I totally forgot doing this yesterday. Um, my mind is not exactly at a really uh, functioning place right now, and a lot has happened, and I'm trying to catch up in school and et cetera. Um, but I won't forget to do this today. And before each meeting, I'd like to do a land acknowledgement, which is something very dear and important to me. The University of Minnesota Twin Cities is built within the traditional homelands of the Dakota, Dakota people. It is important to acknowledge the peoples who own whose land we live, learn, and work as we seek to improve and strengthen our relations with our tribal nations. And uh, my name is Hanvi. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm the major network coordinator. Um, all the mentors here are from our major network peer mentorship program and thank you for those who come today as exploring students will certainly welcome you here and the session is going to be uh, approximately an hour long and there are two parts the first part no discussions with about five six questions that's commonly asked by exploring students which will be properly answered by the panelists and um, we also have the second part, which is um, question and answers. And that part, um, anyone can freely um, raise your hand or like just speak out. And it's, there's no agenda and no rules for that part. And I think we're pretty clear on that. And the first thing I'd like to do is having other panelists introduce themselves. Um, and the icebreaker question for today is, what's, what's your favorite tea? and spill your tea with us. Um, I like have this um, go around in popcorn fashion and I like Anne to start first, if you're okay with that. Hi everyone, my name is Annie. Um, I use she, her, her pronouns. Um, I'm a third year student majoring in strategic communication and my favorite tea would probably just be the guava black tea from Starbucks. That's the only time I drink tea. Um, popcorn Taylor. Hi everyone, my name is Tarani Pingo. Um, I am a third year studying human physiology and animal science with a minor in developmental psychology. Um, I use the pronoun she, her, hers, and I do not have a favorite tea because I do not like tea, but um, I'm starting to drink coffee. So I like iced lattes, so yeah. Um, I'll popcorn, Sarah. Hi, my name is Sarah. I use she, her pronouns. I am a dev psych major and Spanish major. Um, this is my last semester at the U and I love a chai. Um, popcorn, Kwa. Hi, my name is Kwa. I use he and his pronouns. I am a sophomore majoring in human physiology and minoring in neuroscience and public health. Um, and my favorite type of tea is chamomile, popcorn summer. Hello, my name is Summer. I use she or hers pronouns. I am a second year double majoring in developmental psych and physiology. And my favorite type of tea would probably have to be mango. Um, Popcorn Ryan. Hey everyone, my name is Ryan Roberts. I am also in my last semester as a third year senior majoring in international business and risk management and minoring in German and strategic management. Um, and my favorite tea is also chamomile. So popcorn to last but not least, Yukino. Hi, my name is Yukino. I use pronouns like she and her. I am a junior in CSE studying chemistry and I'm also minoring in integrative neuroscience. And my favorite tea is matcha. I think Lena hasn't gone yet. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Lena. I'm in my last semester here at the U. My major is health and well-being sciences. Um, I go by she, her pronouns. I am not a big tea drinker, but if I could pick one, it would probably be like a London fog, like a milk tea latte. 
we love that. And uh, um, since it's a quite small room and we'll have two exploring students, I was wondering if y'all like to introduce yourself. Um, Zoe, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. So, hi, I'm Zoe. Um, I'm currently a PSEO student here at the University of Minnesota, but I will be starting in the fall at the College of Biological Sciences. And my favorite kind of tea would be mango. Thank you, Zoe. You're welcome. And uh, Anissa, did I say your name right? Um, would you like to introduce you? Um, yeah, hi, I'm Anissa. I'm a freshman right now, and I'm currently undecided. Um, and I kind of hate tea, but I love iced coffee, so. Thank you, that's valid. Um, we love all kinds of people, tea people, coffee people, just water people, soda people, we have. Um, yeah, we love that. Um, we'll just jump in the first question here. Let's get started. Please tell us about the process in choosing a major. What challenges or frustrations did you face in the process of exploring or deciding on your major? And the first um, panelist would like to have to answer this question is Taylor. Yeah, so my... Um process was a little strange just because I came in to college with the idea of like pursuing veterinary medicine. So that's why I have an animal science degree. Um, but then I tried to find something for human medicine because I did not, that was not my passion anymore. Like I didn't think I was going to be happy in that career. So then human physiology overlaps tremendously with animal science. So that's why I picked it up. And also I picked up like a child psych or developmental psychology minor due to it just like being something I'm passionate about. So yeah, it was very atypical path to finding both my degrees, but yeah. That's wonderful. I love that you had a somewhat exploring process there. Um, next, go ahead, Ryan, you also share your experience. Ryan, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, you just cut out for a little bit. Um, so I'm kind of a similar story to Taylor. Um, my international business major is actually required as a co-major, so that's why I have, that's why I'm double majoring. Um, my international business major is my like passion major. Um, it's what I want to do with a career. Uh, and then the risk management is basically like, hopefully secure a job at some point. Um, so my goal was basically to turn what I wanted or like what I enjoyed doing into a career, which is like everyone's school I'm sure. Um, and I found that I really like to travel. So I thought international business would be a good fit for that. Um, we'll see with COVID going on, who knows what's gonna happen with that, but Fingers crossed, it'll be fine still. Um, that's that's basically it. Um, I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do coming in. It just kind of developed into more and more as time went on um, based on what happened with <laughs> everything in college and COVID. So like, I, I find that a lot of the times people like would add on like a minor or like maybe a second major if it fits into their schedule just because they find it interesting which isn't like I encourage you to do that just because like learning is fun why not learn some more yeah wonderful I definitely started the same like boat I was so sure I was going to be a math major and then I was like, okay, I have to earn this minor in risk management. Then I was like, okay, uh, I need to earn this another degree in risk management. And now I have two majors, two basically two degrees and two minors, which is kind of cray cray, but um, it, it's definitely uh, a building um, experience. Um, next, can we have any to introduce, uh, not introduce yourself, sorry, share your experience. Yeah, so for me, I kind of went through a major like roller coaster just because 
I went into college knowing exactly what I wanted to major in, which was sociology of LCD and then like a minor in psychology. I was on track to do like pre-law. Um, and then I realized like fall semester of my sophomore year that that's not what I want to do. Like I wanted something different. I want to do something where I was like doing marketing, where I was being creative um, and really be able to use my creative side. So that's when I started to kind of go through a midlife crisis and figure out what I wanted to major in. I mean, the obvious option was to transfer to Carlson and do marketing there, but um, I realized that there was a lot of credits and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to fit it in. And this plus like the study abroad requirement and then like transferring, it was just a lot. So I had to go and like talk to career services, academic advisors, look on the CAPE website, the CLA website, just like so many different things to find like a um, kind of like marketing major. And I was introduced to Stratcom by a career service or a career counselor. And she pretty much just told me to kind of look at like both um, courses in the Stratcom and the business major in CEHD and kind of look at the classes and see like which classes I think I would enjoy more and like and I figured that Stratcom was a lot like better fit for me and plus it was in CLA so I didn't have to go through the whole process of transferring but I definitely do recommend using like the different resources on campus because they're really actually there to help you. Like they're not gonna turn you down. Like go in there, they're like more than happy to help you out. Thank you, that's a wonderful answer. And we'll go to the next question, which is what experiences did you have that contributed to choosing your major? For example, internship or like volunteering at an organization related to the major of your interest. And the first panelist we're going to have for this question is Summer. Hi. Hi. Um, so I kind of went through like a lot of different paths to kind of pick both of my majors, I guess. I was in a health sciences program in high school. So I've been pretty on like the pre-health track since then. And I also had a job working with kids in like a child watch facility. And I did that for like my junior and senior year. And I loved it. And my mom did the same job. So I kind of grew up like watching her work with them too. And like, I think having both of those interests um, kind of allowed me to realize that I wanna be on like a pre-health track that also works with kids. And then I took AP Psych in high school and I really loved it. And I just thought it would be a great way to connect all of those together. And yeah. Thank you for sharing, yeah. Didn't we all take AP Psych? That's such a deceiving class, in my opinion, because I fell in love with psychology for a long time. But then until I joined a research lab, I was like, mm, no, not really for me. But um, yeah, but it's all a process. Uh, next, we'll have Sarah, who's also doing developmental psychology, to talk about your experience. Yeah, Summer and I actually have a class together this semester. So um, yeah, so developmental psychology and Spanish Honestly, I would say the experiences most is with the classes. So like if you take an intro class, it'll really kind of open the doors to like what the other courses will be like. So I took like intro to child psych um, and I knew that I wanted to do child psych and it just really confirmed that for me. And I was like, I love this. Um, I took some Spanish classes because um, originally I was gonna be a minor, but I took more. And then um, kind of like what Ryan was saying, like I ended up finding that there was a lot more space in my schedule. And I was like, I'm just gonna do the major. Um, so I just really have enjoyed a lot of the, the courses. Um, and then other things like similarly, like I worked with children um, and I've been working with children since I was honestly like technically a teen, but kind of a child myself. So um, that, and then um, I also was in a research lab, which confirmed to me that I didn't like research, but that doesn't mean that I couldn't still do developmental psychology because it's actually pretty broad like you could do the clinical side of stuff which is more of what I'm interested in yeah thank you sorry for sharing 
I think I said something negative about child, child psych. That's definitely not the case. It's just like, I didn't really like it, but everybody has their cup of tea. All majors are created equal. I just want to make that clear. And next question, what on-campus resources did you use while in the process of making a decision in choosing your major? Say Cape. I wouldn't tell anyone if you actually didn't use our service, but um, Ryan, you're up. So yeah, to so smoothly transition, I was going to talk about Cape a little bit, actually. Um, I personally didn't go through Cape because I had a little bit better of an idea of what I wanted to do. Um, but I have a really close friend who was pretty undecided about she, what she wanted to do for a super long time. So Cape actually has a list of all the majors at the university on their website. It's only like two pages long, which I guess is kind of long, <laughs> but um, it's, you can, it's really handy to just kind of go through the whole list and just kind of cross out things that might not interest you, like just precursory, just cross things out that you don't like, kind of star things that might be interesting. Um, what I did personally was really, I dived deep into my specific college's um, major and minor offerings. So I really explored what each major and minor was, like the classes that I would need to take to complete the major, um, which was one of the biggest considerations in like choosing my primary major um, based on like what classes might seem the most interesting at the time um, when I was choosing. But um, also I wanted to do to, to, to a side note that don't feel pressured like a lot of us have a double major, but don't feel pressured to double major because like not everyone is built for that. Like obviously some of us have more time than others. Um, in my case, I had lots of time for some reason. I went hard in the education zone, but I understand that not everyone has that much dedication to like schooling. Um, but I, I think just exploring the websites of your specific college and just kind of Cape in general is really good first step because you can kind of figure out what might interest you, what might not interest you, and you don't necessarily choose either. But you can be into your well into your second year and still not have a declared major, um, but you can just have like feelers. You can just sense: Do I like this? Do I not like this? And then build from there. Yeah, thank you absolutely um our office like the fundamental value is that we recognize um exploring and uh, being undecided is very normal and we need to normalize that as well because they data says so like 70 percent of incoming freshmen are actually undecided so there's no worry in there but we're just here to help i also type in the chat what kp is because we're kept saying CAPE, some students might not understand what that is. Um, next, we'll have Sarah to uh, share your experience. Um, yeah, I also use the CAPE website more of like, honestly, um, before I got into college, so like looking into my freshman year. So that's kind of what I did. Um, and then there's a website or like, you can just look up like, what can I do with my major? And it's like through the U of M and it, it can kind of like link, um, oh, this is what people in this major usually do or like what you can do. And that was really helpful for me because I was looking more at like a, I mean, I was kind of like, I feel like this is kind of like stereotyping freshmen, but as a freshman, I feel like you were just told like what your major is, is what you're gonna do. So then to me, that was like really important to me, like, oh, what are my options? But um, yeah, that was super, helpful. So I would kind of like echo what Annie was saying before, like there's a bunch of resources um, and just like talking to people. Also like the major um, mentor network would be really helpful is like we are very honest about the courses that we take, about the people and like that kind of stuff. So what better way to like know what, about the major than talking to the students who are doing that right now. So I would plug that. 
Yeah, I'd like to mention one more time, all the mentors here today are from the Major Network Mentorship Program, and all of them are great. And it's really a, a good way to get in, uh, the first hand inside the scoop of the major of your interest. And uh, whatever they say, like, are not censored by us. Like, I don't know what they actually talk about uh, with their mentees. Um, so it's very authentic. I would say at least I'm being really truthful with my mentees. And we're going to the next question. What aspects of your major do you enjoy the most? Culture, support network, opportunities, course, and et cetera. Um, first of all, I have Lena to answer this question. Yeah, so um, health and well-being sciences is a Bachelor of Science degree, and it's actually um, one of the newer majors at the U of M. When I was in, I think I started two, three years ago, two and a half years ago in the major, and it was not the same name, but I can't remember what the name was before. But what I love about this degree is for any, um, I'm pre-nursing, and for any pre-health degrees, it does give you all of the options to go into health programs in grad school. Since it is a Bachelor of Science, you still get to take all of the courses that usually are needed, like chemistry, microbiology, human phys, stuff like that. But then you get to choose your own focus. I know some people in pre-public health, some people in pre-nursing like me, some people in pre-healthcare um, administration. So it can go from the business side to the medical side of all of health degrees. Um, the community of this degree is amazing because I used to be in CLA and even although my advisor in CLA as a freshman and sophomore was great, the advisors at CCAPS, which is the co college I am, have a lot less advisees. So they really get to know you on a personal level. And I'm really good friends with my advisor now. Sometimes we get chit chatting for like an hour after our advising meeting and stuff like that. But I would say the best aspect of the major is you can really take, if you didn't, if you're not in nursing school, a lot of um, majors at the U are pre-medical fields. I know you can always pre-med too. And um, it's just a good degree to kind of get a focus and something that you want to go into in the future for grad school and be able to zone in on that with really specific classes for your medical degree, but also be able to take those wide range classes um, and chemistry and science classes like that, that will also get you prepared for those future schools. Well, that's wonderful. And definitely health and well-being sciences is kind of overlooked by some students because I know many of um, new students know about it. And thank you for being here, for sharing uh, your experience. Um, next, we'll have um, Yokino to talk about chemistry. Hi, yeah. Um, so one big thing that I really like about my major is that there's just a lot of great professors in my major. And like, for example, there's a few professors who teach organic chemistry, who have a really great reputation. And I personally have had a great experience with organic chemistry. And so I know that like many majors require organic chemistry. So I think that it not only just benefits people who are majoring in chemistry, but um, just people pursuing other majors. And also like I've enjoyed my physical chemistry courses like thermodynamics and quantum, which by the way is pretty difficult. <laughs> um, but I, I do really attribute my good experiences um, to like having good professors. And I just feel like you know, my, the professors want to be there for you and they want you to succeed in the classes. And so even if the courses are difficult, um, they're there for you and um, they're very understanding. So that's um, a big thing that I like about my major. And another thing is that um, it's not, as competitive to get into or get accepted into the major um, as 
as like compared to some other like STEM majors. Um, I think historically everyone who applied got accepted. So I think that it relieves some sort of pressure. Like you know that you have a high chance if you apply to getting in and like being able to continue on. So that, that was huge for me because um, in the freshman year, I didn't like do as well in my classes. So I was kind of scared that I wasn't even gonna get into the major, but um, I did. So that was um, a pretty big thing for me. Um, and one last thing is that there isn't a lot of like required upper division courses there's only three advanced labs and one advanced lecture that's required. So um, you can really, if you want to graduate early, you can definitely do that. And um, yeah, like Lena mentioned, I'm a pre-med student. So um, that just adds like flexibility in my schedule. So I can add um, my pre-med courses or just other personal um, classes. And since I am doing a minor too, um, I can add those classes as well. And it's all, it's all good. Thank you. And also, yeah, um, Yukino came up with the idea of asking questions about each mentor's major. So thank you again for bringing that up. Um, next, we'll have Hi, so in the human physiology major, something that I really enjoy the most about is just the community. Um, a lot of people in my STEM classes uh, have become my friends and we form study groups. Um, a lot of us also pre-health and we'll be studying for like the MCAT, et cetera. Um, and I think it's just a very good community uh, to find within the major. Um, actually, prior to committing to my major, I was considering a CBS, but after taking some of the classes there, I realized that CBS is a very research-focused college, and although I do enjoy research, it's not my passion, and uh, I want to focus more on medicine, so uh, human physiology seemed to be like the perfect blend of both STEM and liberal arts, which is what medical schools want in a well-rounded uh, applicant. Um, other than that, I really liked a lot of the courses, like uh, courses that combine science and humanities, um, and just a lot of psychology classes as well, which is also one of my interests. And just the major is very well-rounded in general which is why I enjoy it very much. Thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, um, when usually people are thinking about, you know, doing something biological science or medical science related, they think about CBS, but there are tons of wonderful majors at, uh, you know, um, still A2. Um, so uh, it does, and the same thing goes with like business major. People think business majors are only in Carlson, but there are tons of wonderful business majors in CHD as well. So um, don't limit uh, just to one college. Cause I know when I applied, you can take into several colleges. I didn't even know what colleges I choose. So I don't, I didn't remember that. So, um, but yeah. And the next question is, what did you do to find ways to gain experience and get engaged on campus? The first panelist up is Summer. Yeah, so I kind of took like a number of different routes to kind of like find and gain experiences, kind of using like Handshake, LinkedIn, like the job searching um, websites like that. Um, going to like club meetings is really helpful because they'll um, share a lot of important information. Uh, I'm in like the developmental psych club and they like provide really good information that's like for developmental psych majors. So it helps out. Um, just kind of like doing your own research, talking to friends, talking to people in the, um, in the field really helps a lot, but yeah. 
Thank you. That's wonderful. And uh, we'll have any to answer this question as well. Um, yeah, for me, I'm a marketing and communication student ambassador at the Asian Pacific American Resource Center on campus. So that's like one of the major ways where I gained the most experience. Um, and then last semester, I participated in the virtual like study abroad internship. So I had a marketing internship in Spain. So that was like a really like cool and like fun way to gain experience. Um, especially since everything is like remote and stuff right now. And then when I was like deciding on like the career path I wanted to take and like the major and everything, I also used the Maroon and Gold Network um, to connect with like alumni and stuff in like the field I was looking into. And I was able to kind of like sit down. This was like pre-COVID. So I was able to like sit down, like have coffee with her and like chat with her and kind of like gain experience through her to see if like it would be a good fit or not for me. So I would definitely recommend like reaching out to alumni or like just random people on LinkedIn and just kind of like get actual like real life experience and like stories from them. Thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be like devil's advocate and especially I go to Carlson, but like start having a LinkedIn in your freshman year, please. Like it's actually um, helpful um, because you can like get connected to many people. You'll be surprised how many people are willing to have informational interviews with you. And those are definitely um, uh, a good experience or like insights to have. And also, uh, don't be afraid to network with your classmates or like if you have an on-campus job, like your coworkers or like anyone basically and your career advisors. I have added all of my career advisors on LinkedIn and they share some really cool job opportunities that won't hire me because I'm international students, but like I'm <laughs> just for like other students. So it's really cool. And thank you, Sarah, for putting in the, um, plug for Merle and Go Network. That's definitely a really, really wonderful resource. And next question, we're actually diving deeper into um, career questions. And before we go into that, another platform you definitely need to check out is Handshake. Handshake is not just about applying for jobs, jobs, but there are also events. I love the event tab. And sometimes I just go there randomly, you know, select event, schedule event to go to. And so, so far they have been really helpful, you know. And the last question, what careers or areas of careers are you currently exploring or are interested in working in? And the first person up is Lena. Yeah, I mentioned um, in, the last time I was speaking about how I am pre-nursing. So I'm applying to a master of science in nursing programs. Um, but I also wanted to talk about like in this major, it's not just, it sounds like it's just pre-nursing, but like I said, you can go from all the way of the business side of the health field into the actual um, bedside care side. So it's me and my roommate are actually both health and well-being sciences, but since she, she has a focus in pre-physical therapy, so she's applying to physical therapy programs. And this major of health and well-being sciences just gives you a really good um, direct path into those higher education programs. Um, but as well in this major, if you want to have a focus in healthcare management with health, health and well-being sciences, you don't have to go on to further school. This isn't just a first step um, major, you can choose a focus that will allow you to complete your major and go directly into the healthcare field. If you want to work on the analytics business and um, how would you say it like a uh, social network of hospitals and clinics and long term care facilities. And this major isn't just about um, reaching for higher education. You can also just use this bachelor's degree because at the end of the day, it is a bachelor of science. And if you choose your focus wisely, you can finish and get a very decent job in the healthcare field. Love that. And we'll have Taylor. 
Yeah, so um, human physiology, I will say, is primarily for pre-health students. Um, you can also like dive into um, the research side of everything when it comes to medical, medical devices, anything along those lines. Um, and then also you can go into teaching if that's something you would like, like picking up, um, since you'll learn a lot of your basic chemistry and like science, any science. So then I'm sure like you are able to teach, but yeah, mostly pre-health, pre-PA, pre-med, pre-everything when it comes to healthcare, so yeah. Thank you. And last but not least, Kwa again, you'll be the last person. Yeah, like Taylor said, uh, a lot of the uh, pre-medical kids are in physiology. Uh, I personally am uh, looking to apply to medical schools, um, but I think what's cool is that um, not just with majors, but minors can help kind of contribute to kind of our goals. For example, um, I carefully picked my neuroscience and public health minors to supplement my major because I am interested in mental health and psychiatry and kind of just learning more about the brain and that just implements my already uh, kind of very scientific and medical major. Um, with public health, I'm interested in catering to minority communities with limited access to healthcare. And I just think that being very intuitive with like what you're studying, what classes you're taking can help uh, supplement your application really well. Um, yeah. I love that you cannot be more wholesome, more scholarly than that, and wonderful. Um, yeah, I was gonna say it's very common to pair a major with a related minor, so or just very standing minors, because um, many students, the biggest question we get at all at our office is kind of like, oh, I have so many interests, I don't know how to narrow down my major. So um, for example, I do like math and have a stats minor is so common. Many people in math have a computer science minor, you know, and uh, um, yeah, so finance is so common to have a county minor or something like that. So that's all the schedule questions now. And before going to q and I just need to do a spiel really quick. And it's actually pretty helpful. And I just want to take you all to explore the CAPE website with me. So yeah. I'm sharing my screen now. I think you all can see it okay, right? Okay, so this is our um, website for CAPE. CAPE stands for the Center for Academic Planning and Exploration. And there are several tabs I want to show you. That's the most important thing. Um, first, make profiles. In the beginning, several panelists also mentioned how helpful it is to have all the majors. Can you all hear me? Can I have a thumb up? Okay, thank you. Um, all the majors and minors, even now we have certificates. This is literally the third generation of our website since I've been at CAPE. Like um, we have wonderful graphic design team, et cetera. And let's just click into accounting to see an example. So it will tell you what accounting really is. Sometimes the name can be deceiving. Like I have students who are going to um, take a major because of this, like, oh, I didn't know that was it's actually about. So a little description might be helpful. And I have degree requirements, which will lead you to the um, complete requirements for um, completing this degree and career information. This will lead you to the career website and major homepage which is the department website, is a great way to um, find information about specific events, opportunities, scholarships, um, professors, faculties, um, et cetera. And how to declare your major, you can see um, the different ways to figure out already. Carlson, talk to your advisor. If you're not in Carlson, you can 
access link to see how transferring would be like and also have department information so you can start emailing the transferring advisor and the minor homepage, minor degree requirements, very self-explanatory and join the major network. This is the next tab we're going into. So major network is the program um, that I'm doing right now. I'm leading, I'm, I'm like doing it alone, which is a lot of work. So sometimes bear it with me if you don't get a quick response, but major network is all about pairing um, exploring students with mentors who are junior and seniors and that are also studying a major of mentees interest so exploring students tells you like what you can expect and mentors if you know anyone wants to join that's great and you can just literally sign up here this will lead you to a google um, form and uh, i will start hearing students uh, once i receive the form and that is my speech um, about our services. Do y'all have any specific questions on that? Brian's like, okay, wait, this is actually really cool. Which part? Like just the whole website in general, I don't know. I don't, it would just be like a nerdy thing for me, but like, there's just, I don't know, it's just so cool. Like, it's such a great resource. Just like, go, yeah. it can like lead you anywhere you want to go or need to go. I, I don't know. If I if I didn't already have a major chosen, I think that'd be super cool. Yeah, everything you want to know about major, it's there. Um, there's also like a part, I don't think accounting included it. There was a summer I was searching like nationwide student clubs related to the major too. So you will have related student clubs and you also have learning abroad center. I was like, what the heck? Like this is like an encyclopedia for each every single major. So it's very useful. I still use it when I'm senior. So there's no shame in that. Um, so and lastly, we're going to our Q&A session and uh, feel free to raise your hand or just open up your mic. Like I said, it's very casual. There's no agenda. Just ask your question away. Also, um, you can direct your question to any specific mentor, or you can just ask a general question that's um, kind of like all the mentors can somehow answer. Well, I do have a question in the chat. For everyone, what was your favorite class that you have taken that is related to your major? Wow, great question. And is everybody comfortable answering that? Because I think that'd be interesting to see a diverse academic background. Okay, I will go first. My favorite class I have ever taken related to my major. Um, I hated them all. Um, no, that's a lie. I took a um, cryptology and number theory class, which was about encrypting and decrypting code using number theory. Um, which was a 5,000 level math class. That part is annoying, but the concept was really interesting. Oh, and can I pop coin to, I don't, I don't know, Taylor, let us know. What we oh, okay. So I can tackle both since there's um, least favorite and then most favorite in the chat um so everybody for, do that yeah i love so for, <laughs> so for most favorite i'll probably say ooh, i'll probably say human anatomy um and the human anatomy lab i'm also in honors so i took the honors lab with cadavers um but i definitely thoroughly enjoyed that i am a big fan of anatomy so i guess that's why it helped me i love learning about the body and so it's not necessarily a requirement for human phys, but it's an elective that you can choose from. And so it knocks out those elective credits. 
Uh, my least favorite. Ooh, that's very difficult. I'll say, ooh, I'm not, I wasn't a fan of Okim. Like I just, I just wasn't. And I don't think that's anything to do with like the people, but it's just, it's not a great, like and when they say it's a weed out class and it's like not fun, it, it's a weed out class and it's not fun. So yeah, that would probably definitely be my least favorite one. Um, I can popcorn to summer. So I guess I'd probably say my favorite class so far has been, um, well, I took um, intro to child life theory last semester and I really like enjoyed that class. And um, I also took like an honor seminar about um, like resilience in children. And that was also really interesting. Um, if you were in honors, take the honor seminars. They're good. And then least favorite, I would probably have to say OCHEM. Um, it's not fun. And also physics. I, mm -mm. I just, I can't do them. Um, popcorn qua. Um. My favorite class so far is a class I'm taking this semester called Blood Bodies and Science. It's a GWIS class that uh, explores the intersection between uh, kind of science and healthcare as well as different minority identities, gender, sexuality, race. So I think it's very interesting and very relevant to the healthcare field. Um, like Summer said, my least favorite class is probably the physics and chemistry sequences. Um, it's just very difficult weed-out classes that are required for our people to take like upper division classes, but kind of just scra scraping by moment. <laughs> uh, popcorn, Sarah. Henry, were you gonna say something? No, I was gonna remind him to popcorn. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Um, so one of my favorite classes um, for my major is like actually an introductory level class for a lib ed requirement, but it's also in the child psych department. It's called Global Issues on Children and Youth in Society. And it's a super chill like intro course. And it's just like, to me, it was like really like just confirming that I really liked everything that I was learning. Um, and it was like a lot about resilience and, and that kind of thing. Um, least favorite, I actually don't really have a least favorite, but I will say to check rate my professor because I feel like there are some classes that were good classes, but the professors made the experience not so great. Um, oh, and I also do have a, a favorite class. It's counseling skills um so if you if anybody that's for my family therapy minor but if anybody's like ever interested in like therapy or like counseling that's like it was like such a cool class because usually you wouldn't see those types of classes in undergrad levels so um super cool and popcorn yukino my favorite class is probably related to my major is probably quantum mechanics for chemistry. Um, it was, I, I just had a really, really good professor who went into the class, like teaching about more like the concepts, um, who didn't go straight into the math, which I'm not, I, I don't like math at all. <laughs> Um, but he really went into it and he explained a lot of the background first before going into the math. So that really helped me. And, you know, it's just you learn about the electron and it's the whole class is about the electron and how it moves. It's, it's really cool. Um, but yeah, you just you, you realize that you can't like. It's not like classical physics, so. Like you can't expect the electron to move like you would like l a light particle or um, something. So like, oh no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not gonna go into detail. But anyways, yeah. So that's my favorite class. And 
my least favorite would probably be general chemistry. Um, I don't know. I think it just has to do with it being my one of my first like chemistry courses I took at the U. Um, I just found it really hard and difficult. Um, but yeah, organic chemistry was difficult for me, um, especially or organic chemistry too, because it was just pure memorization of so many reactions. I, my brain could not handle it all. So yeah. <laughs> oh, um, popcorn to Annie. Um, I think my favorite class would probably be psychology of advertising, which I took last semester. Um, I think it's because, I mean, it has to do with my major. And then also, like, I think Summer said this, I took AP Psych in high school and I loved it. So it was good. Um, as for, like, my least favorite class, I guess right now relating to my major, it would have to be um, media planning, which I'm taking right now. It's just, it's just a lot of like data stuff. So I'm just not like, I just don't understand it. I had to work in this one assignment that was like reading data and I just couldn't figure it out. So it was terrible. Um, but I think least favorite class like ever at the U is Spanish. I'm sorry for the Spanish majors, but I have to take Spanish for my language requirement and I just, I hate it so much. Um, popcorn, Lena. Yeah, so my two favorite courses of all time have already been mentioned. Me and Kwa are in that Blood Bodies and Science class together. That's super interesting. And like Taylor to Anatomy Lab was so interesting. Work being at a university where you have access to real life human cadavers is such a privilege. So many other universities and colleges don't have access to literal full cadavers that we can examine. So that just felt like it makes you feel like a scientist. And I was like 19 in that class, but <laughs> that was really fun. My least favorite, I loved microbio, human microbio. I hated just bio 1009, introduction to bio. It covered a lot of plant biology and it was almost so general. It was kind of overwhelming. And I also just really don't care for plant, plant biology and their makeup. <laughs> um, I guess, Ryan, have you gone? Popcorn to you. Um, I'm going to sound like a huge nerd when I say my favorite class, but <laughs> I don't know why I just found um, my favorite class to be one called Portfolio Analysis. <laughs> um, it's It was basically like retirement accounts and investing and stuff. Um, and like based on people's risk appetite and like how much they were willing to risk um, or how risk averse they were in various senses. Um, I being a business like a, in, a, in a business school i am very into math um so like that kind of class really translated well for me because there was a lot of math in it which is probably why i enjoyed it so much um but also one of my majors is about risk management so like it makes sense that i would like that class um but like i don't know there's just something about it that i thought was so cool it was it seemed so practical in a way because like you can learn stuff that can apply to your personal life instead of like an academic or, or a career sense like everyone should have a retirement plan um so i just found that to be super super cool that i can learn about how to do that in college kind of like everyone's like oh why don't we learn how to do taxes and all this stuff in high school like blah 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 whatever that kind of stuff um, and then my least favorite class is kind of just like in general, probably accounting. I don't know. There's just something that doesn't click with me with accounting. It's boring. <laughs> um, I don't have much else to say about that. I actually love that you said you don't like accounting. I don't like accounting either. Like no shade. Like people like are no Carlson kids like no, they think accounting is such a big deal. 
don't don't even try me like honey like no accounting is hardcore now and also what's your opinion on all the um insurance classes i hate them all because only have one professor and no he's not it yeah i would agree i think they don't, don't were do great it. content wise terribly taught professor way too old he should have retired like 20 years ago doesn't know how to teach <laughs> But they had, like, the content would have been interesting if it had been taught by a different person. I think it's like going back to the person who said, I think it was, it depends on the professor. It really depends on the professor. Some classes that are terrible can be made really great with the great professor. Yeah. And uh, um, Summer, I don't think you went, right? Did you go? Yeah, I went. Okay, okay I'm tripping. What has <laughs> Who hasn't gone yet? Everybody? Okay. Because I want to make sure everybody had the equal opportunity to let their anger and frustration out this is a therapeutic session and we love that. Um, do I have more questions? Wow, everybody's just hating accounting in the chat. I love that. This this passed the vibe chat. Taylor, um, it's good like your dad is a content, so you don't have to do accounting. Your dad can help you. Yeah, I don't think he necessarily enjoys his job either. So that's that. <laughs> no. And and also like um like me and Ryan are in finance ish too, and I literally don't know anything about investing. I mean I got an A's in my class, uh GameStop, don't know, don't know. Do I invest? No. Do I talk about stock market? No. Um, so that's also proved the point. It's like whatever you learn, sometimes a degree is literally just a degree. It's good you're passionate with that, about it, but like um, your career doesn't necessarily equal to your major. So, well, since we don't have any questions, I'm more than happy to let you go three minutes earlier. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Zoe. You're so wonderful. And thank you, Anissa. Uh, Y'all stayed this whole time. So um, I will stop recording now. <laughs>